I have to confess that this has uh, got me a little bit taken back by just how fast all of this is coming to pass. I was thinking about this yesterday, I think it was, that it's like being in a car driving very fast in order to arrive at your final destination. And the closer you get, the more frequent the signs are. I was reminded of a experience that my wife and I had in 1997. We were staying with my aunt in uh, Egypt. She lives in uh, Giza. She's actually in Australia part of the year, and then she has a place in Egypt. Uh, Giza is where the pyramids are. So we were staying with my aunt, but we wanted to go to Alexandria, and we had to go by way of train from Cairo. But because of the traffic, uh, we got, this is 1997. This is B.C., not before Christ, before children, when we could travel. And we um, missed our train from Cairo to Alexandria, which is my father's birthplace there on the Mediterranean. Beautiful, beautiful. And so we ended up having to take a cab. Um, when I say that this was the cab ride from H-E double toothpicks, I mean this was the cab ride from H-E double toothpicks. I thought for sure this is how it ends. We're going to see Jesus. So we're driving. It's about a, depending on how fast you drive. You know, it's a couple hours. Well, apparently this um, uh, cab driver wanted to get there in world record setting time. So he's driving very fast and no AC, and it is so hot, and we've got the windows down, and my wife's in the back seat, and she's got her sunglasses on. It's kind of funny, because when we finally arrived, she took her sunglasses off, and she had raccoon eyes, because it was all <laughs> dirt from, you know, the, <laughs> I mean, it was, anyway, so it was so Frightening. At one point, I told in my native tongue of Arabic, my uh, fellow uh, Arab uh, cab driver, um, who wouldn't see Jesus if we, <laughs> but I, I basically told him uh, in Arabic, if you don't slow down, uh, I will not pay you one penny when we arrive in Alexandria. And you can let us out here if you want. I was hoping you wouldn't, because, <laughs> yikes. Uh, so he, he slowed down. Uh, but not very much and not for very long. Well, what happened was um, I began to take notice of the signs to see just how close we were to arriving at our destination in Alexandria. And I have to tell you that the closer we got, the more frequent those signs became and how encouraging were those signs, especially one of the last ones that said you're only a couple of kilometers from Alexandria. I'm like, oh, Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. But the closer we got, the more frequent the signs. And that's how I see what's happening today. The closer we get, the more frequent and welcoming, I might add, <laughs> those signs become. I think about what Jesus said, it's recorded in Matthew. Talk about the harsh words in our uh, study in Galatians. The harshest words from the Savior's mouth were for the, the legalists and the hypocrites and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and such is the case here in Matthew 16 verses 1 through 3. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came and they wanted to test Jesus and they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. This was Jesus' answer. When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. Wow. You know, my hope, I mean, with any and every prophecy update that we have, it's always my hope that it in some way is a help to you. But particularly for today, I hope that in some way today's update has been some help 
in better interpreting the signs of the times. The signs for Ezekiel 38 are there. And they're coming more frequently as we get closer. And interesting with those signs, uh, when we were there, uh, as we got closer to Alexandria, the signs became more detailed. The signs became more detailed with more information. And I see Bible prophecy that way. We are seeing with specificity the details of these prophecies in these signs that I hope we're interpreting. Here's the bottom line. It's what Jesus said in Luke 21, 28. And the key word in what he said is beginning. He says this, when you see these things begin, begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. We're seeing Ezekiel 38 begin to come to pass. And Jesus said, when you see that sign, interpret those signs that are beginning to come to pass and look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh.